The party discovers a map of the maze of tunnels under the earth, hundreds of miles of passages, areas shaded and marked with cryptic symbols. But such an expedition will certainly require the utmost thought and care in planning and preparation. How many persons should comprise the expedition? How will they be supplied and equipped? And what of drinking water? Who knows who or what will be encountered in this gloomy underground world? How will the monstrous opponents be dealt with? These questions and more are to be answered as the party sets forth on its descent into the depths of the earth. Hello and greetings lovely person. This is RPG Mods Fan, and in this video I will be reviewing and discussing the Dungeons and Dragons module D1 Descent into the Depths of the Earth, which was written by the legendary Gary Gygax, and first published by TSR in 1978. This module was meant for player characters between the levels of 9 to 12. This module was written for AD&D 1st Edition rules. The Dungeon Master will need to do some work to convert it to 5th Edition rules. The D1 module is meant as a sequel to the G series modules, also known as the Giant series. As FYI, on my channel I have already posted walkthroughs of the G series. Shameless plug, so please check them out. Descent into the Depths of the Earth is the first module of the three part D series. Shrine of the Koatoa is the second module in the series. In 1981, both modules were reprinted in an omnibus collection. And Vault of the Dro is the third and last module of the D series. The D series itself is part of a larger overall campaign of adventures known as the GDQ series. The overall campaign begins with the Against the Giants series and continues through the D series. The D series are set in a vast subterranean network of interconnected caverns and tunnels, also referred to as the Underdark. The campaign concludes with the Q1 Queen of the Demon Web Pits module. In 1987, all of the GDQ modules were compiled together into the Queen of the Spiders super module. Warning. Spoilers ahead for the conclusion of the G series. If you do not want to know such spoilers, I would stop here and not watch the rest of the video. As stated before, the module's adventure starts after the events of the G series. In the G3 module, the band of adventurers discovered that Dark Elves, the Drow, had instigated the Giant Alliance and its warfare upon mankind and its allied races. Within the Fire Giant stronghold was a wide natural passage descending endlessly into the bowels of the earth. Also within the stronghold, the party finds a partial map of the Underdark. The module assumes the party will pursue the Drow who escaped from the Fire Giant stronghold and are now fleeing into the Underdark. Ha ha ha! I am the evil Dungeon Master, and I will now be discussing the module itself. And this video will contain spoilers. Unless you are like me, a Dungeon Master, who will be running this module for your players, or are a player who already played through this module and are watching this video for nostalgia purposes, I would suggest not to watch the rest of this video. Ha ha ha! 
The plot of the D-series modules has the pathetic party of player characters on the trail of the almighty drow priestess, Eklavja, through the Underdark, battling various creatures on their journey. The D1 module is pretty much filler between the Giants modules and the more urban parts of the D2 and D3 modules. Basically like a filler episode in a TV series. There is no overall story development, no internal quest, no objective, etc. However, it can serve as a way to convey the gloominess and oppressiveness of the Underdark, which I find to be very lovely. Fellow Dungeon Masters, don't worry, I have an idea on how to remedy the filler nature of this module, which I will mention once I have discussed the main encounter area. The player characters seek the drow by traveling through an underground world of caverns, caves, and passages. The D1 module takes place in the lower right-hand side of the Underdark map. The D2 module takes place in the middle section of the Underdark map. And, finally, the D3 module takes place in the upper left-hand side of the map. The areas outside of the D series is left up to the Dungeon Master to detail out. That is too much work for the DM. Especially when you do not know which direction your players will go. So, use other modules set in subterranean settings, or just improvise. They won't know the difference. The whole module is simply random encounters, and three encounter areas. The random encounters are rolled once per hex traveled and depends on the size of the passage travel. Whether it be the primary passages, which are the widest and most used by the Drow and other denizens of the Underdark, or whether it be the secondary passages, which are the next widest, or whether it be the tertiary passages, there is a good chance that the party will encounter a drow patrol and or a drow merchant caravan. Their reputation amongst the drow will depend if they choose discretion over open hostility. However, the Dark Elves are too chaotic in nature to organize a search for the party. So, at best, the Drow will be aware of the intruders, and are more watchful and suspicious of them. The first encounter area is an unavoidable Drow checkpoint. Here, there will be 14 male Drow and 13 female Drow. The male Drow contention includes two leaders who are 4th level fighters, one commander who is a 6th level fighter, and a noble liaison who is a 5th slash 7th level fighter slash mage. The female drow contention includes two 6th level clerics and one 9th level high priestess. Drow have 120 feet or 36 meters of dark vision. So, they are likely to spot the player character's approach before the player characters can spot them. How they react will depend on if there were any escapees from the previous G3 module. Inquisitive player characters may discover that the Drow are split into factions. Their city, Erelai Sinlu, has eight noble houses and 16 merchant clans. Each has their own wearable brooch or pin that identifies which noble house or merchant clan the wearer belongs to. The second encounter area is a Mind Flayer spy post. However, 
At one hex before the encounter area, I would have the party encounter cowardly giant rats who will flee at the sight of the player characters. These giant rats are actually were rats who will alert their mind flayer masters at the spy post. Here, there are two mind flayers and 16 ratmen and were rats. The mind flayers have a drow merchant captive and are interrogating the merchant for information on current alliances, power groups, and feuds between the drow clans and noble houses. Here, the player characters can learn that the Drow and the Illithid are foes. The Drow are aware of this spy post, but currently have not done anything about it. If the player characters eliminate this spy post and are able to prove it, the Drow will react positively towards them. They may even be given black metal medallions, which act as a token of free passage within drow-controlled areas of the Underdark. The third and main encounter area is called the Caverns and Waverns of the Troglodytes. The Caverns and Warrens of the Troglodytes is basically a monster condo. It is primarily inhabited by lovely creatures. There are a number of troglodytes within this cavern complex. How many are in each cavern is displayed as red numbers on the map. Displayed on the map is the number of drow that can be encountered and their present locations. By the way, the drow commander here rides a nightmare. Gargoyles can be encountered in two caverns within this complex. Mugbears have a large tribe within this complex. The number and locations of the bugbears is displayed on the map. The initial number and locations of the trolls is shown on the map. Oh, I forgot to mention. The Troglodyte Chief has two pet waverns. He loves to take a stroll and ride on the largest one. Other monsters that can be encountered include Undead Gas and Ghouls A huge purple worm Dreaded Piercers Shrieking Shriekers and Violet Fungi Along with the Shriekers and Violet Fungi, the huge Eastern Cavern is filled with Fungi Patches, which are tended to by the Troglodytes. The Fungi supplies much of the food for the creatures which inhabit this place. The most powerful and most handsome denizen of the Cavern Complex is me, Cough. I mean, a lich named Asperdise. The lich layers in Sunken Cave Number 7. In case you have not heard me before, the D1 module serves no other purpose other than being filler between the G series modules and the rest of the D series. Here is my ingenious solution to that problem. Have the Grand Cavern be a slave auction market, as well as a meeting and marketplace for all sorts of delightfully evil denizens of the Underdark, such as the Drow, the Elephant, and the Koatoa. The Lich, Asperdise, is the proprietor of the market. However, the Lich prefers to be left alone and leaves the daily operations of the market to the bugbears. In addition to the bugbears, the gas, ghouls, gargoyles, and trolls are there to keep the peace. Asperdise is more interested in arcane knowledge and items than in wealth, which is why he set up the market in the first place, hoping such items will come to him instead of seeking them out. 
The lich will forego his fees in exchange for such items and knowledge. If you have not figured it out by now, my name is Asperdise, and I am the evil dungeon master of the Descent into the Depths of the Earth module. It has been so lovely to chat with you. Please come and visit my marketplace, and be sure to bring arcane knowledge and items with you. I will pay a hefty premium for such things. Now, I must bid thee farewell. Is he gone? Phew. Looks like it's safe to come out now. The one thing that Asperdise forgot to mention is that the Germlane are new monsters that make their debut in this module. Germlane are very small creatures and are about 30 centimeters tall. They are meant to be a nuisance to the party instead of a threat. In the module, they can only be encountered as a random encounter along the tertiary passages. Thank you for watching. Hope this video has been informative and entertaining. I love many types of role-playing games, including computer role-playing games. So, in the foreseeable future, I plan on continuing to feature RPGs and CRPGs on my YouTube channel. Till next time, this is RPG Mods Fan saying cheers, have a good day, and goodbye. I walked away, had to find a place and I'd become